Welcome to Charts Chat for September 18th, 2018. All right, the, for those of you who just came, here is the agenda public, dropped into chat. Um, and so we've got a few discussion topics here. And I guess we can start with the first one, which is uh, update the object API versions to support Kubernetes versions 111 and 110. Let's see. So Scott, you added this? Um, oh, I don't know if I did. Well, I added, I added one yeah. to update, update uh, the, I think I, it was very limited what I mentioned was just updating the deployment to V1, but there may be other, other objects. I don't think I meant, I don't think I made one or did I? You, you created the issue that's linked in the meeting minutes. Um, so yeah, and, and here's the thing, we're working on 112. And oh, I see. Yeah. It, yeah. It, this is fairly limited in scope the way I wrote it, but um, we can expand it to, you know, it's really updating the resource versions is what the issue is about. But, yeah. So what is it? Uh, apps V1 is now supported <laughs> in every version of Kubernetes that's supported. And then some. And so it's probably an opportunity for us to drop the V1 beta twos and V1 beta ones for all of those app ones, because we don't need them anymore. Kubernetes binds the scene, uh, upgrades them, but there's some, yeah. That goes along with some of the other stuff we probably need to talk about with labels in a minute that need to get yeah. fixed first, but <clears throat> something we should uh, consider going through the charts and updating if we have time. Or maybe since even we, be, oh, go ahead. Um, jo I was just gonna say, since we need to make a breaking change for the other issue anyway, it may be good to go ahead and do the V1 at that point. Um, or maybe we should talk it out and see if there's any value in doing it in two steps. Here's a question uh, also. Oh, go ahead, sorry, Reinhard. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's as always a general question. Do we really just wanna like update all the charts or do we like just, I mean, there are some chart maintainers who want to support all the versions explicitly. Um, and I mean, I usually recommend V1 nowadays when I review uh, PRs, but I mean, do we really have to care and update all uh, existing charts? That's the question as always. I mean, <laughs> it's a whole bunch of PRs and, and which we have to get through and yeah. Lots of tests that will fail and uh, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's a good point. We, maybe yeah. we don't, I mean, I would actually second what you're saying. It's an issue to track it. I don't know that we need to do them all right away. There are affected charts for the other issue that Cedric's been focusing a lot on. Um, maybe for those ones that need to be updated anyway, we can just go ahead and update to V1 or we can discuss whether or not we should do that in two steps as well. There, there's a third option here. We're, okay. we're getting ready to do the hub, right? Where we have distributed chart repositories. Yes. Do we tell folks that what goes in the hub should be apps V1 and make that one of the, the rules? Because what we've got, and it depends how far back folks want to go with their support. Um, Reinhard, do you know how far back folks want to go and where, where actual installs are? Because I'm going to say Kubernetes 1.9 was where apps V1 went GA. It, it depends. I mean, most of the time people are fine with apps v1 and there are some maintainers who, oh, I need this on 1.6 or 1.7. Well, that's a good, that's a bigger question, right? Is whether the hubs will have the same, should have, sorry, the hub distributed search should have the same criteria as the mono, monolithic charts um, repo, you know, like can they decide to have multiple versions, you know? But yeah, and, and here's, uh, but this comes into the question because we're putting together the guidance now to launch this. Yeah. This could be one of those things where we say, to be listed, you should be on apps v1 because at some point the betas are gonna drop off um, support and so we're not gonna wanna do that anymore. And so you should be at least at v1 because even versions of Kubernetes that are no longer supported by the community are or even OpenShift supported because OpenShift is a version behind, so they even go back one more, right? Yeah. Even all those support V1. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I think it'd be a good idea to enforce that, but how do we really enforce it? <laughs> well, char charts, charts, the charts repo explicitly says we're, we're the current version minus one, right? That's what yeah. is supported supposedly. We could just carry that over into the distributed repo. Yeah, but if it's di distributed, it's not really under our control. So do we have a central job that enforces <clears throat> this? Or how, how are we going to go about I that? I think there's probably a two-step process. One is first a policy that says do this. And then the second, which we can layer on afterwards, is automation to enforce that policy. For example, we could, you know, because we can go check these, we could go occasionally download a new version. And then when a new version comes out, have a job that goes and checks it, right? So eventually we can say, here's criteria you need to have on your repository to be listed. And then we can later go ahead and automate those things. That's a really good point because we, the, the vision that's there now is that the distributed, and this may be getting off topic or maybe it's perfectly on, I, I don't know. Stop me if it isn't. <laughs> but the distributed search idea is that it can not only have single repos for one chart at a time, but it can have a repo, you know, for, for many charts so that we, they could pass the initial PR and get in and then continue to add more charts afterwards that don't meet the criteria. So I think what I was initially saying is that one way to do that is, if I'm understanding correctly, each chart repo that's listed there will be will be um, will be a separate PR for the monocular hub. Yeah. So the initial gate is that we just check and say, hey, wait a second, it doesn't meet the criteria that we have listed. But but separately, I think your point of having automation that would be good because new charts could always be added after the fact after they're already listed. And right. new chart versions. And so yeah. real simple, and we don't have to automate to launch it. And we don't need to automate yeah. to have policies, both the policies and then, you know, asynchronous and even later developed automation can all come into play and, and yeah. be changed and updated and tweaked as we go. None of this is, is stagnant, right? So we could say, here's, here's, our, here's our stance on it. And then later on, add automation to it. And then maybe even roll back some of the stance on it and say, okay, we'll do this for these reasons. We're willing to add wiggle room in and even update the automation that all of this, I think is open to change. Um, yeah. But at least just starting off with a policy gives us that initial checkpoint of getting going. What do y'all think about that? Because then we don't have to worry about the community charts, but then we're planning for the future to head in that direction yeah. where the future's at. So one good. other thing, what's the official deprecation policy on those APIs? Can't we just follow what Kubernetes is doing rather than so, creating your own policy? So in Kubernetes API land, um, all of those betas, like beta, or, uh, beta V1, you know, V1 beta 1 and V1 beta 2 should already be gone because it's six months or two releases. But there is a bug of things being pushed to disk. You can't deprecate the API. And until that gets fixed, none of the old APIs are being dropped. So, oh, I see. I was going to ask why they're still listed as supported. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a page on it and, and a long-term open bug. Uh, uh, with API versioning and do they even have the, is the bug still listed? It may even not be listed anymore. So here's the document on uh, the versioning policy. Oh wait, API, maybe it's under API. It looks like stuff's been rewritten. Oh. It's just like a slippery slope on the consumption and deprecation of APIs. Like yeah. apps is okay, but then it's like RBAC and uh, volumes and storage classes and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And then V2 will come along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just like going to be a, if there's nothing officially on deprecation upstream, like why should we? They, they do have an official deprecation I've, policy. Yeah, I have read that policy, but never seen it enacted. But as you said, if it's a bug. But, but now I, I guess people are dependent on that bug. Yeah, we don't need to be, and I'm trying to find it. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember reading that thing. Aha. Yeah, policy stuff link, direct link. It's in, it's in the same doc. No, no, right here. Different policy. Um, the deprecation policy. Aha. Yeah. And the bug is, is it still listed on here? 
the issue is issue 52,185. Until that is resolved, no API versions that have been persisted to storage may be removed. And that's the issue number. But they have it and it's linked and it has to do with... I see. Yeah. It has to do with the storage upgrade mechanism. And it's been around since oh, about a year. <laughs> and there's a cap on it. So, so there is progress being made. Um, but that is the reason they have not been deprecated. Yeah. And once something hits V1, uh, oh. For duration, no less than. Okay, it looks like there's been some changes because I thought G8 V1 versions were going to be basically supported forever um, once it hits a GA, but it looks like there might be another rule that's been added in here other than the most recent. I'm reading that v, uh, GA is supported for 12 months. Yes, or three releases, whichever is longer. I think that's a newer rule, and I, I probably missed that in SIG architecture. But yeah, it's, it's at least a year. And so we, we don't even have that problem because I don't think there's any V2 APIs that are hitting where the V1 is expected to go away. Uh, but we'll probably eventually get there. And then we'll probably be for charts even longer out because we're talking supported versions. And supported versions is N minus, we'll probably go from an N minus one to N minus further you know, like two or three for all the Kubernetes supported versions. And then we might be talking two years out or something like that. Uh, so it's, it's a long time, right? But I think if we just say, so how about this? I'm writing up the docs on policies. I'm going to try and do that this week. I already pigged the CNCF to see if they had any guidance on the kinds of things we needed to have. And so I'll add in your workloads APIs need to be version one or newer. How does that sound? And we can consider that our upgrade policy. Okay. So then the, the stance will be pre pre V1, go with whatever there is, but once you hit a stable, then everybody needs to get to a stable. So in newer APIs that haven't hit a V1, use what's there. Yeah. But once you hit a GA, everything must move to a GA. Um, once you have a GA that's in all supported versions of Kubernetes, that's when you need to be there. Okay. Okay. And for now, supported is current minus one. But like you said, we might expand that. We could. We should probably do Kubernetes versions, which is n minus two. Okay. So. I think it's m or is it n minus? I I know it's n minus two. It's three versions. Okay. And we might even be able to be talked into N minus four, which would probably hit all supported versions of some of the distros, which are released behind. They do some odd things in there when you get into the distros and there's a lot of distros now, uh, but we can start with N minus two. It's interesting. The current, the charts current, the charts repo currently says. N minus one. Yeah, the latest minor and the previous one, basically, yeah. Yeah, I wrote that, and the justification for it was uh, it was very hard to build logic and get people to build logic into the charts to do three versions. Um, yeah. But it's not so hard now because apps is stable. And it was at a time where you had apps, you had extensions, and you had apps v1 beta 1, and then apps v1 beta 2, then apps v1. And it was jumping between those that made this so hard. But then the deprecation policy um, kind of things stop getting deprecated because of stuff being persisted to disk. And then now we're apps V1 long enough that yeah. the problem that pushed us to N minus one really isn't there anymore. So, all right. But this will get us past without having to do much on the charts repository. This will get us to apps V1 <laughs> slowly. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, the next one on here, if we're ready to move on, is uh, review guidelines, names, and labels. So there is the Helms labels guide and then the review guidelines. Uh, not sure who put this in. Did one of y'all put this in?
is this about the mute the sorry the the immutable label issue no no so uh kubernetes came out with a set of recommended labels app.kubernetes.io slash and then there's name managed oh, right. by instance version component part of and a bunch of what helm used to have uh with the exception of helm.sh slash chart all became overcome by event and everything's now uh, namespaced uh it, you know it all became over you know, overcome by Kubernetes trying to move to a common standard. So you don't have Helm specific ones and um, you don't have, you know, uh, I can't try to think of the other tools right now. You don't have, basically each tool doesn't have their own. Once you have interoperability, it means everybody can use the same thing. And then tools like dashboard can visualize things deployed with different tools. It basically brings a point of interoperability between tools into play. That was the whole goal of the effort. And Helm switched to this in its documentation and even in its automatic generation a month or two ago, but the chart stocks are not updated. And so the question was, when do the questions here say, should we switch? When and how? Will this break charts for upgrading? Um, and then it relates to the breaking changes of charts. What's 5357? Yeah. Uh, create and document chart not policy for breaking changes and upgrades. Yeah. Scott, you created. Yeah. You want all these policy things. Oh. Uh, so what does it mean? Um, I think it would be a breaking change because um, your match labels, when you're querying for things, would then change, which makes it a breaking change, even though it's metadata. Uh, so yes, it is a breaking change. Um, I think where we rested with that issue, we could probably basically close it as long as we we all agree it's a good idea to, it seems like the simplest thing for breaking changes that at least for now is to add an update or an upgrade section to the readme and then just say, when you're upgrading from this version to the, or before this version to after this version, do X, Y, or Z, and then be done with it. That way we don't have to worry about a lot of automation and other fussy things. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <clears throat> This is also one of those things that I could put into the, the docs on when you submit charts to the repo for the distributed search, use mm -hmm. the new naming convention. I can explicitly throw that in there. Nice. Um, does, that, does that provide a barrier for us though in getting some of our planned charts in? Uh, I guess that might be a question for Adnan because if, uh, if I'm remembering right, one of the first example chart repos that would probably go in there is the Bitnami ones, right? Because it's already distributed, or it's already separate, mirrored. Yeah. So Adnan, how much work would it be to, or how bad would it be to update the labels in all your charts? The uh, Bitnami ones. Probably not too difficult, but I can go and find out what that would take. Okay. Well, do you feel again, Oops, I'm sorry. Once again, it depends uh, what version is using the chart that we are grading. Uh, if it's, once again, the V1BA2, uh, it's once again a breaking change. So it depends how we see it. Um, I think it's easy to, even if it's a breaking change for other reasons, uh, it's not blocking to upgrade everything that is older than v1ba2 so upgrade everything that is v1ba1 should be easy but there's a few i think maybe 10 8 or 10 charts that are using the v1ba2 and this is related to the uh, email thing yeah which makes me think we can probably fix both issues in one uh, at the same time so update all the labels to the new format and uh, fix the issue with the, the chart version in the in the match labels. Do you, do you feel comfortable with the idea of giving a note telling people how to manually do that as needed? As your step? Well, the manual step, 
Hmm. I think there is no other choice for those uh, blocking, breaking changes that tell people uh, either delete everything if that's easy or do the not cascade thing uh, that I've yeah. tested for uh, RabbitMQ and it works, by the way. Oh, great. So I guess I was just wondering more procedurally, you know, more just organizationally, Adnan, do you feel like that would be satisfactory for the Bitnami charts? Is it's, to make it's absolutely awful, but we have no other, other choice. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it's really the best way to get out of it. Um, okay. I, I think we just need, do, do, we, do we put this down in a place, the, the steps? Um, Cedric, did you write this in an issue somewhere? Well, I've uh, I've started to write several things. Uh, one of them is the new guidelines for all the labels. But I, I can well either we continue on uh, David uh, issue or we measure it so that it's only one issue. Uh, the new label thing and the immutable thing, the selector things, and we, we do only one PR. Maybe it's easier because it changes both things and doesn't make sense to do two PRs for me. So I don't know what you think about this. Yeah, I, I think we could do that in the same PR. Just basically rework all the labels. It, it touches so, But what do you think, <laughs> my chat? Well, there, there's kind of, kind of two things here, right? Because it's, upgrading from upgrading API versions for something like deployments is different than changing the labels because of the match labels problem, right? Well, I'm only talking about the new guidelines. Maybe I can link the PR. I've well, the reason I was going to ask though, is do we push for brand new charts to use the new things, but existing charts that have an upgrade path because of the match labels can still use the old label naming because that's not, such a breaking change. I mean, it's going from apps, you know, V1 beta two to V1 is going to be one thing, but that's an upgrade process, right? When you replace one deployment with another, if it's still a deployment or a stateful set, that's not necessarily a breaking change. You can still upgrade. I mean, it's an API breaking change, but it doesn't break the upgrade in your cluster, right? But if you, no. your match labels change, that's a different thing because now Kubernetes will have to see something as a different install, right? It's not, you can't just do an upgrade anymore. You have to do a new install, right? Or am well, I wrong? Well, for, well, for some, some of these, we have to change them anyway because it's currently unupgradable. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen the issue yeah. um, where some charts are using the chart name dash version as a match label and, and when you go and upgrade that, that breaks. So for those charts, I think, you know, we can just update the labels to the new format as well as just fixing that issue in one go. Um, I, I, I've, it, I, I, get, I get your point about kind of allowing all the charts to kind of grandfather and use the old labels, but then eventually we'd probably want them to use the new labels. So then the question is, when's a good point to actually make that breaking change? Is it now or is it somewhere in the future? And, and I think of something like, we'll say the Bitnami MariaDB chart, right? Moving it from the stable to your own repository, somebody could just point to a new location and continue to, uh, you know, consume it. But if we now change the labels and therefore the match labels, right, then we run into the problem of, oh, I can't just point to the new location. How do I upgrade that MariaDB that I'm running with something else? And that that's the harder thing. I'm trying to think of the end user experience. And now we've created a bump in the road. Yeah. Like what's their upgrade process for that MariaDB instance? And yeah. that's where I'm that's where I'm wondering because now we're breaking users. And that's one of those things that I'm always very hesitant to do. I, I think what we talked about before is that the 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 way we'd be doing it is just, you know, um, if they are yeah, like it will be Oh, but with MariaDB, I'm actually, I'm not sure how that would work with stateful sets. I was going to say with, uh, with deployments, with a, with a connected, oh, never mind. Yeah, the stateful set still has a PV, a PVC. So, so that PV will stick around if they don't manually delete it. So they, then they could just pass that as the existing claim. I think that was what we said would be 
our recommended upgrade path for, you know, for um, important work, you know, whether it's production or something they don't want to delete, you know, they're going to have to delete, they're going to have to otherwise delete those other resources and the PVs will just wait for you. And then we can pass the existing, existing. That's thing. true because the PV will continue to hold the stateful information. That's why I said, correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, stuff should be upgradable then. You would just destroy the old resources and create new ones. There is a but. Um, I'm looking at the um, state rule set for MyDB and it's, it uh, defines the chart label once again in the volume claim template. So upgrading to V1 means deleting this field and it means, I don't know how that works, but it may not be smooth. Oh, right. How would that work? I don't know. I don't know how, how that works. <laughs> but we, we should have to do some experiments here. Yeah. Unless someone already knows the answer. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, if it's just changing the labels in the metadata, I don't think that should affect the underlying persistent volume. But we should definitely check for sure. It shouldn't affect the persistent volume, but it may affect the persistent volume clay, the yeah, persistent volume, the PVC, uh, which changes. And uh, how does Kubernetes work with this? Is it a P happy to just edit it, or does it? Yeah. Oh, or do you need? Is to it able to find it? I don't know. Well, it's not match labels on the claim, right? Just labels, just the metadata, right? Yeah. There's no match. So will it just update the labels but keep the claim around because it's not on a match? That's what I would expect it to do. That's what I would expect because it's the match labels. That's a problem. We should probably well, test it though. Uh, mm -hmm. it, I don't know, but it, it would probably try to... There's two things that we need to try. Either it's, it edits the existing PVC and it's okay, or it cr kind, of, kind of create a new one and breaks something. You just have to try yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, I'm not that familiar with the way volume claim templates works versus just creating regular PVCs. So there may be some magic in there. That... Yeah. We should we should so, collect more information on it before we make any moves. Yeah. Would basically, also, if this is a problem, we would have a problem with all persistence, all PVC configurations because these are the standard labels, and this is even in the recommendations in the guidelines for persistence. So this is if this is a problem. It, and it has the chart one in there, right? Which has the version in it. So right. every time you upgrade MariaDB today, they change. Uh huh. I don't know if it's already broken or not because it's. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's. I don't think this is a problem because I would have run into many problems if this was a problem. All <laughs> right. That's encouraging. That sounds very encouraging. That's encouraging. <laughs> well, we might one, have, one, we might have a path here. <laughs> I've, updated, <laughs> I've updated a MongoDB replica set multiple times <laughs> and yeah. without any problems. <laughs> that's, that's really great. Um, one thing that we might want to note, though, is if we want to suggest that the upgrade path for charts is to pa it, on a breaking change like this is to... Well, it's sounding like we're saying we might just be able to upgrade the chart period, but, but if we put it on, on important storage, we probably want to pass the existing claim to charts, but not all charts have the existing claim option. So that if we are going to make this kind of breaking change, we should also note, we should also note to ourselves that we should, if there are affected charts that we need to do that with, we should add that existing claim option if it's not there. Right, because they don't, they may not all have it. I'm not comfortable with this existing claim option because basically, in my case, for example, I do everything from CI and I don't want to manually delete things and hard code uh, anything in my CI just to state that I have to use an existing claim. That sounds like a hack for me, but Let's, you have no yeah. other, other choice. Let's do some testing first and see what works automatically without us having to do anything. Right? <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. see if we can just get away, because I think we can get away without adding the existing claim option, looking at everything. I noticed Mongo is different than Maria, because Mongo in the claim doesn't have labels. Okay, so um, I, I'm just looking at, at Mongo actually. So in, in the stateful set, the volume claim template doesn't have any labels. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm just checking an installation. Um, the automatically provisioned. Um, let me see. Uh, wait a minute. Um, the, the persistent volume claim that's created has the app and release label. So this somehow seems to be come from the stateful set. Okay. Yeah, and if it's linked to the stateful set and the stateful set goes away and there's a new stateful set, there could be a problem picking up the volume claim. We, we should go do some testing here, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I mean, we're talking a lot, but at this point, this is where I would go off and say, let's do some experiments and see what we break. I agree. I think I went a little too far down the game theory rabbit hole with this. <laughs> good. Maybe we could do some experiments and hey, I'll guys, try and, and do it. Just, and then next Tuesday, we can come back and talk about them. I've just tested it and... Well, it's funny. It's already broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the test is, is simple. Just install the MariaDB chart from Git, uh, change the chart, upgrade, and it complains that in a stateful set, you can not change anything but uh, replicas, template, and update strategy. So it's already broken. It's broken today. All right. It's broken today. <laughs> okay, so what does MariaDB, let, let me check it out. What does it differently than, than Mongo? So we have three problems, three upgrade problems. The V1B1 problem, the V1BT2 problem for the selectors, and the everything about putting um, template templates in a stable set. Okay, so, so the difference to Mongo is the labels in the volume term claim templates. Yeah, it doesn't change. It's in label. All right, we probably need somebody to go attack guidance on this <laughs> and come up with what works and how, how we should be doing things. So we can pass this on to all the distributed repositories because it's, if we've been doing this for a long time and running into problems and we didn't catch them, then I expect lots of other people are gonna have the same thing. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, just a gap in our testing. We test certain things, we don't test, test perhaps upgrades. You know, um, that's a pretty common software problem. It happens. We found a gap. You, found, you know, <laughs> thank you for helping to find like the, the details of this gap, Cedric. That's great. Um, I, I'm just, uh, Matt, uh, I think your point about having guidelines for the distributed hub is really the best bet. And it may just be that it's one of those, I, it would be nice if it was, uh, just like a smooth transition where no one noticed, but there may be cases where, excuse me, there may be cases where people will notice, um, probably when they upgrade, you know? And it may not, it, it may just be that people don't upgrade much. Maybe that's why we don't have a lot of, it hasn't been raised. Yeah, or maybe it has been raised in all those issues that we have been terribly neglectful because we're overwhelmed in getting to. Maybe, maybe. Because we are, we have been overwhelmed, which is why we need to get to the distributed search. And I'm just trying to think of ways to make that easier. But yeah, if we could, in fact, I would, I would argue that if we can come up with maybe an upgrade test for install time uh, and ways to lint to check for, for version things and match labels and put that mm -hmm. into the chart testing work that Reinhardt just killed it with, if we could add some of that functionality to there, we could start distributing more of that as well. but automate this stuff to make it easier and then give pointers. Okay, I just made a note of that, a to-do note in the doc. Okay. Maybe I'll make an issue for that, if that's helpful. I don't wanna add to the glut, but. Yeah, that's okay. Let's, let's, let's give people some good useful guidance and direction so they don't get caught off guard too, because I was caught by this and I, you can tell I'm working a lot upstream and I'm not dealing with this day to day with actually operating these things day to day. Yep. Okay. All right, and if we could come up with some way to test for this sooner, that would make some of the, uh, when we switch to distributed us to be able to get some good repos in there that are upgradable.
and fix this sooner rather than later. Okay. Are we good on this? Okay, I don't feel good with this one. Is there anything else we should document as to-dos or do before we move on to the next topic? Well, I just added this, Matt. Um, I think that's what you already started working on. It's really a stub. Yeah. Um, I'll add another one for adding upgrade tests. Okay. Automating upgrade tests. Okay. Uh, you might want to, the automating one, you might want to do on the chart testing repository. Ah, uh, yeah. Good point. Thanks. Just so those things get caught over there. It also only has six issues, which means it's a totally manageable list of issues. <laughs> All right. Are we cool moving on to the next one? Yes. And this one is, should we accept new charts with the advent of distributed search? I put that one. Just came to my mind recently. I mean, could we just like tell people how to set up their own repos and okay, soon you will have to be, you'll be able to hook it up with the distributed search. Kind of, or. So so, Adnan, how are we looking on the monocular changes coming in? Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll have something working by the end of this week, at least, in terms of okay. you, you know, the changes that we're making. Uh, I don't know. Have we got a cluster yet, Matt? Is there someone we, we can stand us up? We don't. I'm going to go do – are we cl – I'm going to go – ping the folks on that because I want to get this going in a place where we can hand out permission to the folks here to go tweak with it. Um, in fact, I'll go do that right now. Let me go see. All right. I just pinged the person. So hopefully they get back to me later today um, because I'd like it. And then I know where I need to go for the DNS. And it's just waiting on the cluster to get the cluster going and then getting the DNS and the Nginx ingress and all that stuff set up ahead of time. So we can get, okay. we can get off to the races. Um, but I can go fire that off. <clears throat> I think we can probably wait for not accepting charts until the distributed search site is up and we have more documentation on how you're actually going to stand up a chart repo. I feel like before we have those pieces, it's going to be hard to convince people that to not put things in stable. We need to have tutorials on here is how you, not just tools, but like human readable tutorials that says step-by-step step, here is what you do. Cause I know there's this yeah. really neat tool that turns Helm charts into GitHub releases, right? But there's no docs on using it, no tutorial. And I think we need the step-by-step step, here is what you do so that folks can really easily, without thinking, just start doing it, right? The don't make me think is important, not just the tools that exist. So, well, yeah, we do need some of that. But, I, um, but it might be worth, I mean, is there a way we can make people more aware that this is going to happen at some point? Helm mailing list, Helm blog post. Maybe even something in the readme. Hmm. Question is who reads the readme? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure until it launches that it, the, I mean, that's the easiest way to start communicating things is when it launches. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know of another way. I, I hate to say it, but we're terrible at writing docs and probably even worse at reading them. <laughs> but blog posts and tweets and new things out there we look at, right? It's true. Shiny new things. Shiny new things. <laughs> yeah, I, I would probably be okay accepting them um, the way we have until the distributed charts shows up and then asking people, okay, can you meet the guidelines and put it over here? which is probably going to be like another week or two is my hope. I hope it's not longer than that before the first go of it is public. 
That's good. Does that sound okay, everyone? Reinhard, does that work for you? Yeah, sure. It's a great question. And then that's our agenda. Is there anything else we should talk about while we're all here and we've still got 17 minutes left? Uh, do, do we have a plan for deprecating the charts repo once distributed search is, is up? We should try and get rid of it <laughs> once it's up. <laughs> I think once it's up and stable, we need to start asking folks to, to, to um, deprecating to move into their own repositories for changes which hopefully most people are happy to do. And then we could add a, we probably need a document, but add a deprecation note to each of the charts and marking them deprecated and adding a deprecation note of, go find this in this new location and pointing to the new chart repository or new chart repositories in the case where uh, two or three people decided to fork from that central one saying, here mm -hmm. are three places you can get it from and noting it in the readme yep. for the chart along with the deprecation flag. That, that's probably my first gut reaction to doing it. And we could we could document that. We have a that process already from incubator to stable. Perhaps we have monolithic stable to distributed stable or whatever. Yeah, yeah but I like the idea of getting rid of this hot potato as fast as possible. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else we should talk about? Hold on. Uh, only that I just added this issue. Okay, I, I hope to know. Okay, so I hope to know this week. Um, about the cluster. If not, I'm gonna start chasing down other options. If I don't know by tomorrow, if I don't have a good answer, I'm gonna start chasing down other avenues. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the meantime, I might try to see if we can put it up in in, in one of our Bitnami clusters somewhere just to have somewhere to see it. Um, okay. yeah. Sounds good. I have one question about timing. Um, for once again, for the V1 BA2 problem, um, should we? It's, it's, it's kind of a chicken and an egg problem. Should we solve right now the problem uh, in accepting PRs for this, or should we document first and then solve? Because um, well. Every minute that we don't fix this, uh, new people are installing broken charts. And solving this right now is, may, may be the good solution, but we may not do the right thing right now if we don't know what, what to do, what labels to use, for example. So what should we do uh, about this? So my two cents, and please, anybody, if you have something better, please come up with it, uh, is to come up with the best solution and then document it. And then we can uh, both fix up the charts in the charts repo using that solution. And we can tell those who are gonna come into the distributed search to also use that solution because we're, we're kind of confident and here's what you should do. Because if we go try to fix two or three of them, but we're not confident enough to write it down, then we're also, we might have to go fix them again or again. I'd like to actually have a solution and then document it. Cause that means it's communicated to everybody here and then some. So when we're, <clears throat> when we're reviewing or doing anything else, we can actually make sure it fits that solution. I'm asking this because it's really, t it's really tied to the V1 upgrade and all the labels changes. Yeah. Uh, it, it can, for this problem, it cannot be treated as two separate problems yeah um, so we have to fix that once uh, so that we don't we don't fix and break one thing and then 
break again in two weeks. So I, I believe those two sentiments are compatible. Mm -hmm. um, my, I just linked the Slack chat that we had yesterday. Um, Adnan chipped in a bit to that too. Did, did someone else? In any case, uh, I don't think so yet. So I kind of went back and forth on it because my initial thought was, let's make a documentation page or something that's one central place so that way when we upgrade, we can, each chart, we can link to that. And then as we, you know, iterate on, you know, future tweaks or fixes, we can, you know, we can do that in one place and the charts will still be immutable. Um, and I thought, well, that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the fix so far that we know is fairly straightforward, but if we do want to, if we do want to link somewhere, we should probably just link to a central issue because that way it's an issue that we can close. We won't, we won't be adding new readmes or we won't be adding new sections to our readme for something that's just a, a one-time problem, you know? Um, I, I agree with Matt though that I think that one way or the other, when we make a breaking change per that other issue, we really do need to document what people need to do. And if we're not 100% sure that we have, you know, all of the, the nicest solutions, but we do have at least one, I say let's, let's have a central issue that holds that, you know, like document best solution for blah, 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 blah. And then when you make that, those PRs for each chart link to that issue in the upgrade section in the readme, something like that. Yeah, one of the biggest things about documentation is the ability to communicate between all of us and anybody else who needs to be involved in this, right? We need to have a succinct way to communicate it because if one person has a solution and does a PR to, to all the ones that they think, that doesn't mean somebody else can't stop this from coming in or another person who goes to fix it doesn't try to fix it a different way and hasn't learned. The ability to communicate is the reason that I really like the documentation being there. Yeah. So how about, uh, we have two issues already. They've got a lot of information in them. Um, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine to just link, because they're two separate issues for two separate problems and each chart will have one problem or the other. Unless it has one template with one and one with the other and, and then fine, link both of them, you know? And as we understand it better, we can clarify and, and you can even, Cedric, you can even update the, the main description if you want with, you know, that says update. This is the current known way to handle this. Boom. You know, and as that, as we gain more understanding, we can always update that and those charts will still always link to it. Yeah. You know, those immutable uh, versions. Actually, we should have three issues with the new uh, volume clip template that we just found. We'll write it uh, later. Um, yeah. Great. And so for the, yeah, the main issue, um, maybe I should just, well, edit it to state that we should use the new labels, uh, the new recommended labels and stop using the old ones so that we can fix all at once and it's easier for the V1 uh, change. So I've tried to do some PR for Redis and maybe the only thing I have to change is to use the new label and maybe that's it. Cool. So it sounds like we have a solution to your question, right? Even though the, the final answer to how to fix each thing may be tweaked over time, at least we know, at least we have a working solution for not holding up those PRs now. Right, so we can link to each of those canonical issues in the upgrade notes for each chart. Okay, cool. Great. Okay. Anything else now? Just one note, um, I don't know if it has already been discussed, but for the chart testing thing, I've been playing today with the uh, CubeVal uh, tool, and I've found that a few, well, Redis, for example, doesn't 
follow well, that doesn't validate against this tool. So maybe it could be a good idea to add this tool to the, the, the testing chart, the chart testing repository. I don't know if you already used this. You said kubeval? Kubeval, yes. Yes. So I had actually thought about using this um, in the past and adding it in for validating against whatever n, n minus one, n minus two, because you can specify versions and actually validating that it all works. I, it was one of those things that I've long wanted to do and have not gotten around. In fact, there might be an open issue somewhere in the charts repo about doing it. So sounds, I'm interested. Sounds good to me. Okay. I've just added this in the, into our own uh, CI and it works well for information. For information. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Going once, twice, three times. Thank you everyone for such a lively and uh, a great conversation today. I think it was a useful call. So uh, thanks everyone and have a wonderful week and we'll see each other online. Sure. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks everyone.